Hello, third grade, and welcome to unit one, lesson one in our motion and forces unit. When you navigate in your student login, if you are online, <clears throat> you can open up Inspire Science for grade three. Click over here to go to the motion and forces unit, and then make sure you're in lesson one. Let's go ahead and watch our little introduction video together. Hi, I'm Emily. Do you ever wonder how things like airplanes, bugs, and birds fly? Well, I do. Someday, I hope to be an aerospace engineer. Aerospace engineers design, build, and test things like airplanes, helicopters, rockets, and spacecraft. My dream? To work with other engineers to build a spacecraft that takes the first person to Mars. Maybe someday, you'll be on my team. See you soon. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our lesson. Now we're starting our lesson, Motion and Forces, and lesson one is about motion. In the very beginning of our lesson, we saw the first assignment that was on page four to measure how far you thought the snail traveled. Now, if you're looking very closely at where the snail is positioned on the ruler, you can see that over here, it's starting point is at two, and over here its ending point is at seven. So it says Lupina wondered how far the snail traveled in one minute. She placed the snail along measuring tape as shown in the first picture. After one minute, the snail was at the position shown in the second picture. How far did the snail travel? So here we're going to be finding the difference in between the two. So we're going to take the seven where it finished, we're going to subtract the two where it began, and we're going to find our answer, and we know that it traveled five centimeters. Now moving on, we are going to go and hop in to our next section. Now we watched the video uh, first about the boy playing basketball. And I'll show the video to you guys one more time. For this video, you are answering questions on page five. And then we read about the statistician, which was our STEM career connection. Once we completed that and the questions related to it, we carried out our inquiry activity where we were working on identifying an object's position. So what you had to do for this activity was write out directions to a mystery object in your classroom or in your home and have somebody follow those directions and see if they could identify the object that you were trying to direct them towards. This was also a good way to practice and figure out, were we using the correct language? Did we give specific enough instructions? And it helped us figure out how to make those directions better. Now our vocabulary for this unit or for this lesson are the words position, distance, direction, motion, and speed. So position is the location of an object. It's where something is. Distance is the amount of space between two objects. So if we were measuring the distance on that ruler where the snail had started and where it had ended. Direction is the course or the path which something is moving. So what direction is it going in? Is it moving to the right? Is it moving to the left? Is it moving up or down? Motion is a change in position of an object. So when something is moving, it is in motion. And lastly, we have speed. Speed is how fast an object moves over a certain distance over time. So your speed is how far you moved in a specific amount of time. Next, we're going to go in and our next part is going to begin on page nine where we are going to be reading through pages 20 and 21 in our science handbook. And then we're going to be answering the questions. So let's through, read through our science handbook together. Page 220 in our science handbook is titled Forces and Motion. Our first header says position. In this picture, where is the boy in the purple shirt? He's next to the girl in the blue overalls. He is over the girl wearing the pink shirt. When you describe where something is, you're describing its position. 
Position is the location of an object. You can describe something's position by comparing it to the positions of other things. Words such as over, under, left, right, on top of, beneath, and next to give clues about position. You could say that the pencil sharpener is next to the classroom door. Or you could say that the school cafeteria is to the right of the principal's office. When you describe the position of, an, of something, you compare it to the objects around it. How can you describe the position of the girl in the pink shirt? So we can say the girl in the pink shirt is to the right of the boy in the blue shirt. She is beneath the boy in the purple shirt. Our next section is distance. You can describe something's position by measuring its distance from other objects. Distance is the amount of space between two objects or places. Distance can be measured in inches, yards, or miles. In the metric system, distance can be measured in millimeters, centimeters, meters, or kilometers. You can use a ruler or a meter stick to measure distance. Direction. When describing position, you must use both distance and direction. Distance tells how far an object or place is from another. Direction tells which way a line points from one object <clears throat> or place to another. The words north, south, east, and west tell direction. So do the words left, right, up, down, forward, and backward. The position of the yellow sponge bear in the picture is to the right of the smaller metal bear. How can you describe the position of the smaller bear using distance and direction? So if we take a look at our image down here, we can say the small metal bear is about one inch behind the yellow sponge bear. Make connections. Read a diagram. To learn more about measuring distance, look at the units of measurement <clears throat> units of measurement section about SI units and customary units in the science guide. Let's go ahead and head back into our workbook. So for page 220 and 221, we read through those pages. What words describe position? So if you were to go back, there are several, several words and examples that they give us to describe position in the second paragraph. Number two, how could you find the distance from your desk to the door? So think about what kind of tools you would use to figure out that distance. On page 221, describe the position of the smaller bear using distance and direction. So this is what we were just talking about a moment ago. Think about how we described the position of the little metal bear. On page 10, we're going to watch a short video called Things Move on different types of motion, and we're going to answer the question. The questions we're going to look at are number four, what is motion? And number five, using your vocabulary words, describe how the girls or boys changed position. So let's go ahead and jump back over here, and we're going to watch the video together. We live in a fast-paced world Every day, people and things are moving all around us. But have you ever stopped to really think about how and why these things move? Let's slow things down and talk about motion. Motion is defined as the action or process of moving, changing place, or changing position. So, when an object is actively doing one of those things, it is said to be in motion. Notice how the horse in this video is moving in forward motion? When we slow this footage down, we can really see how much energy it's exerting to change its position. These girls are about to change their position too. Watch as they leap into motion and change position from the floor onto the bed. So on your mark, get set, let's go and learn about motion. All right, now that we've completed watching that video, we're going to go ahead and answer the questions that we were talking about on page 10. For the next section 
on page 10, we have questions about motion. So we're going to read pages 222 and 223 in our science handbook, and then answer the following question. How does a straight, mo how does a straight motion differ from a zigzag motion? So we're going to go ahead and flip the page, and we're going to read this section about motion. Look at the pictures of the dog below. To the left, you can see the dog is on the ground. Next, you see the dog come completely off the ground. What happened to the dog? It moved. You know that the dog moved because the position changed. While an object is changing position, it is in motion. Motion is the process of changing position. Objects can move in different ways. Look at the chart on the next page. The bowling ball moves in a straight line. Objects can also move round and round, back and forth, or in a zigzag pattern. The skater spins around and around. The snake moves in a zigzag path. It moves forward with a short, sharp, with a short, sharp turn from one side to the other. The pendulum swings back and forth. How can you tell that the animal has moved? So let's take a look at this picture of the dog at the bottom. You can see that it's kicking up from its back feet, comes completely off the ground, and you see it start to come back down. When you throw a bowling ball, when you're when you're in a bowling alley, you throw that bowling ball, it's going to move in a straight line towards those bowling pins. When someone is spinning while they're ice skating, they're moving in a round and round motion. Snakes use a zigzag motion to move. And our grandfather clock here has a pendulum in it that swings right and left throughout the hours. So you're going to use the information to answer question number six. Now the next section we're going to take a look at is going to be on to page 15. We're going to hop back over here. Now that we've completed reading that section, we're going to jump back and we're going to take a look at what we have next. So moving past, the investigation. We're going to jump into our next section and we're going to be reading about measuring motion. Now, before we get into this section, let's take a look at what we're going to do on our next page on page 15. So for page 15, we're going to read through an article called Moving Through Time on How Motion Affects Transportation. And we're going to answer these three questions about it. Our questions are, why were horses a good choice for travel? Number two, why did cars, how did cars compare to horses? And number three, what is the predictable motion of a wheel? Predictable means the one that you expect is going to happen. So what you think is going to happen. How did the predictable motion of wheels enhance or make transportation better? When we're talking about enhancing something, we're talking about making it better than it was before. So let's go ahead and read through our passage over here about moving through time. How do you get from point A to point B? People travel to explore, trade goods, and make visits. In the past, types of transportation have been slow or expensive. Some transportation methods have used many resources or created pollution. As time passed, new methods of travel have improved how people travel. For centuries, transportation was mostly by horse. Horses travel faster and farther than people. Carriages were pulled behind horses. Travel by carriage was comfortable. Later, flat wagons were made. Flat wagons carried large loads. Wagons could only go the speed of the few horses. Roads were also rough, and this slowed the travel, this slowed the travel time. Compared to today's forms of transportation, Travel by horse and wagon was very slow. People began to look for new and faster ways to travel. Some people had a hard time purchasing feed for their horses. The bicycle was developed by the early 1800s. The bicycle did not need food. The original bicycle was heavy. It was made of wood. It weighed more than 19 kilograms or more than 42 pounds. Travel by the bicycle was limited. The bicycle is not made for long distances. It was also hard to carry a load on a bicycle. 
In the early 1900s, cars were introduced. Cars were faster than horses and bicycles. They could travel farther. The Model T was a popular car. It was designed in 1909. It could reach top speeds of about 38 kilometers per hour or about 45 miles per hour. Early cars were not safe. The car designs have changed. Cars can now travel faster. They can travel farther. Seat belts and airbags make travel safer. In 1903, brothers Orville and Wilbur Wright built an airplane. The first flight only lasted for 12 seconds. It only traveled about 36 meters or 120 feet. For many years, only a few people could afford to fly. Airplanes could only hold a couple of people. These early airplanes were also dangerous. Modern airplanes are safe. They hold many people, they travel fast, they also travel farther. So that's the end of our reading passage over here. You're going to go through and answer your questions. Why were horses a good choice for travel? How did cars compare to horses? What is the predictable motion of a wheel? And how did the predictable motion of wheels enhance transportation? So think about all of the things we read about that have wheels in them and how knowing which way a wheel usually goes helps you to figure out uh, how that can make travel easier. <coughs> all right, moving on, let's take a look at our next page. So we have a performance task for page 16. So you're going to build two models to show patterns of motion. So we're going to look back on page 223 right here. And we're going to look at these four different kinds of motion. And what you're going to be able to do is go through and choose different items, either in your classroom or in your home, that you're going to use to model those different kinds of motion. So draw your models of two different patterns of motion. Label each motion that you're modeling. So you'll have two boxes. You can pick any two of the kinds of motion over here and you'll be able to draw them in the boxes. Make sure you label everything clearly so that it's easy to read and understand. Now for page 18, <clears throat> you're going to answer some questions about the models you made and drew. You're going to describe a pattern that one of your models shows. So tell me about it with detail, use your words, give lots of examples. For number two, describe how you use the model to show that motion and use vocabulary words. So make sure you go back and revisit our vocabulary words if you don't remember what they are. I will pull them up for you once more over here. So our vocabulary words are position, distance, direction, motion, and speed. And for number three, pick one of the models. What did you predict about the future motion of that model? So what do you think it's going to do once you get it moving? What's going to happen? Is it going to stay moving in that same way? Is it going to change? Is it going to stop? Why or why not? And the last thing we're going to cover our essential question, think about the video of the boy playing basketball at the beginning of the lesson. Describe the various types of motion that you see in that video. So once you complete that question, you are done with this lesson. Great job, third grade. I will see you again for lesson two. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.